All right, here we go. Question number 11 from our 1316 homework number five in my lab math. We're asked to find four parts to this problem, okay? They want us to find sine of two theta, cosine of two theta, sine of theta over two, and cosine of theta over two. And what they've given us is that sine theta is two fifths. So we're going to make a note of that. Sine theta is two fifths. And they also tell us that theta is in quadrant one. Notice they say theta is between zero and pi over two. And what that means between zero and pi over two, it means that theta is in quadrant one. It's a quadrant one angle. And so we're gonna need to find the exact value of each of these expressions. I've got the formula for sine of two theta right here. And sine of two theta is two sine theta cosine theta. I've got sine theta. What I need is cosine theta. So here's how we're going to get that. Recall that sine is y over r. So in this case, I know what y is and I know what r is. And then I can find x by using Pythagorean theorem. So we know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Moving the 2 squared over makes that minus. That's going to be 25 minus 4, which is 21, which is not going to square root nicely, okay? So that says x is square root 21. So that means that cosine theta is x over r, which would be square root 21 over 5. And then I have everything I need now to work this problem. So sine of two theta is two times sine theta times cosine theta. And then I just need to work that out, okay? So the two out front is understood to be over one. So in the numerator, it's gonna be two times two times square root of 21, which is four square root of 21 over one times five times five which is 25. And so that should be our answer for sine of two theta, four square root 21 over 25. Cosine of two theta. Now to calculate cosine of two theta, we actually have three double angle formulas for cosine. And I'm going to choose the last one because it uses sine theta only, which is what I was given. So that's going to be easier to calculate, in my opinion, because it uses the piece of the puzzle that I was given. Okay, so that's going to be 1 minus 2 times sine theta squared. And remember, sine theta was 2 fifths squared. And then I can calculate that manually or I can calculate it electronically, which I choose to do electronically. So that's going to be 1 minus 2 times 2 fifths squared. 17 20 fifths. And that should be the answer for cosine of 2 theta. Now, I would like to point out, if you decide to use one of these other two formulas, you should get the same answer. It shouldn't matter which formula you choose, okay? So let's see here. 17 20 fifths. And then it wants sine of theta over 2. Okay, so here I've got sine of theta over 2. Notice it does have a plus or minus out front. That doesn't mean that there's going to be two answers. It means that the answer is either going to be positive or negative, and you have to choose the correct one. 
So this outcome is going to be positive, and here's why. Remember that they told us that theta was a quadrant one angle. Remember that? Theta was in quadrant one. So if you take half of theta, it's still going to be in quadrant one. And the sine and the cosine in quadrant one are both positive. So I know that these are going to be positive answers. Okay? I also need to make you remember or recall that cosine of theta is square root of 21 over 5. So when I go down here to do this formula, do you see that it involves cosine theta? So that means that we're going to be using the fraction that we came up with a minute ago. All right, here we go. We're going to have the square root of 1 minus square root 21 over 5 all over 2. Again, cosine theta, square root of 21 over 5. That's where I'm getting that information from. And then I'm going to need to simplify this expression. Okay, so let's do this. 1 is the same as 5 over 5. And that gets me a common denominator for the numerator so I can combine those. Okay, so that's going to be square root of 5 minus the square root of 21 all over 5 all over 2. And that square root symbol really should go like this. Okay, then if I simplify this, that would be the square root of 5 minus square root of 21 all over, this is going to simplify to 10. And that should be the final answer. It doesn't look nice, but it should be the final answer. And I'm beginning to wonder if the calculator will simplify that for me. Let's use the Casio and see what it says. Let's see here. Square root of, uh, let's go back to the original, okay? 1 minus fraction square root of 21 over 5 over 2. Nope. The Casio is not going to be able to display that as an answer like as such. Never hurts to try, though. All right, let's see if my lab math likes it. Square root of a fraction, 5 minus another square root of 21 all over 10. Fingers crossed. Oh, yeah, boy. And let's do one more. Cosine of theta over 2. Again, this is a half angle formula. It's got the plus or minus out front that you have to choose the correct sign. Remember, it's going to be positive because we're in quadrant one. And so this is going to be one plus the square root of 21 over five, all over two. And if you're going, where did you get that from? Just remember, we already calculated cosine of theta up here. And so that's good for every part of this problem. And then I'm going to need to simplify, okay? So let's do that one more time. Square root of 1 is the same as 5 over 5 plus square root of 21. Whoops. Over 5 all over 2. And I made that too long there. And that would be. Uh, we now have a common denominator of 5, so that would be 5 plus square root of 20. Did it again. Square root of 21 all over 5 all over 2. I guess I could write it like that if I wanted to. And then do the keep change flip. So if you know what I mean by keep change flip, that means change division to multiplication and flip the two to make it a half. 
which would be 5 plus square root of 21, now all over 10, multiplying straight across. And remember, it accepted this answer a second ago, but let's consider the uh, fact that this does imply that there is a square root in the denominator, right? If I separate that up, I can do the square root of the top and the bottom separately. And let's say that you did not want to have a radical in the denominator. Let's say they want that rationalized. Well, we could multiply top and bottom by square root of 10. And then up top, since we're multiplying a square root times a square root, we can multiply their radicands together, okay? So that would give me the square root of 50, 5 times 10 is 50, plus 10, square root of 21, now all over 10, and that would be the denominator rationalized, okay? So that answer should also be acceptable. Let's see how flexible my lab math is for these answers here. Okay, so then notice this time I'm entering the answer differently than I did for sine of theta over 2 to see if it'll accept the ration, uh, the answer with the rationalized denominator. And it did, okay? So the my lab math in this problem is going to have some flexibility with how much you simplify your answer for those half angle formulas. All right, so I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.